South Africa's Institute for Justice and Reconciliation has released its latest transformation audit. It's titled The Youth Dividend. Joining us now from Cape Town to discuss strategies to unlock potential in South Africa's youth is Jan Hofmeyer. He's the head of policy and analysis at the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation. Jan, thank you very much for joining us here on Beyond Market. I'm looking at the press release and it says the audit finds South Africa's youth ready to face the future with hope. Um, quite an inspiring, quite a hopeful um, message uh, from a constituency that is often facing enormous difficulties, whether it's the lack of skills, the lack of employment, um, you know, being taken up in the economy. They are often the victims and the perpetrators of violence. Um, your findings, um, you know, but at odds with the way in which young people are normally depicted in South Africa. Tell us more. That's true, Karima. I, th I think when, when we speak about young people in South Africa, the discourse is normally framed as one of being a volatile part of our, of our demography. And um, you know, when we also look at, at this year's audit, there are some worrying statistics, but maybe just to provide some context with, with regard to the focus of this year's transformation audit. Last year's census has shown that about two thirds of South Africans are younger than 35. Um, last year has also seen the, the launch of the final draft of the National Development Plan, which, which made it quite explicit that it is a youth-biased document. In other words, the very nature of it, a forward-looking document, long-term forward-looking document, is that it focuses on the issues that affect young people in, in South Africa. And um, one of the comments that, that really stuck with me um, in, in this report is that when looking at the South African demography and the, its youthful nature, the, um, the report remarked that this can either be the perfect window for sustainable development, or it can also result in the perfect storm. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talk about the perfect storm, that is also where this discourse of volatility comes in. And when one looks at, at the statistics, um, one, one sees that about 71% of the unemployed in South Africa is younger than the age of 35. About 43% of children find themselves in the poorest quintile, in other words, the poorest 20% of, of our population. So statistics like these may stem as negative, but I, I think statistics also have their own limitations. And one of those is that, that they don't necessarily always measure uh, sentiment and emotion, things like hope and trust in, in the future. And uh, I, I think these are, are important commodities that, that, that are maybe intangible, that one cannot always see, but they do play a very important role in, in terms of the momentum that a country has in, in moving forward. And when one, when one sees that about two thirds of our population is young, this is something that we should nurture yeah. and something that we should treasure. Yes. Now, the, 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 the sentiment of, of young people being positive or our finding uh, of them being positive and hopeful for the future comes from a series of, of national focus groups that we've done about a year and a half ago. And when one looked at the sentiments of adult South Africans, it, it does confirm this, this, uh, this, this notion of youth being volatile, but when we looked at, at how young South Africans felt, um, their response was more one of, we, we view ourselves as, as creative, as resilient, and also hopeful yeah, let me and come in, in charge here. of our own destiny. Let me come in here. The, the view that, they, um, uh, that you say is informed by the fact that there's a sense of optimism. Um, what is driving that optimism, given the fact that um, the stats look so bad? Um, often when you talk to educators and policymakers, um, around messaging for young people, whether it is uh, safe sex, whether it is hope in the future. It's this idea that you have to sell belief that their lives can change um, and that things can you know, turn out for the better. Talk to us about what the drivers are that um, you know, informs the sense of hopefulness. Hmm. I think as people coming from a different generation, we you know, we, we might dismiss the sentiment as mere youthful naivety, but 
when one, when one looks at some of the research that have been done around intergenerational poverty, one sees that, that young people are being disproportionately affected. You know, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, about 45%, 43% of, of young South Africans find themselves in the poorest 20%. But what one has also seen, and, and there has been a significant drop also in child poverty. One has seen so also a drop in the numbers as far as child hunger is concerned. And, and another thing that we, we also cannot sort of dismiss is, is the fact that young people have had increased access to certain sort of basic services. Mm -hmm like uh, access to sanitation, decent yeah, housing, I, I want to come electricity, in here. clean uh, water and... I want to come in here. The access to services, albeit patchy or uneven, the um, fact that there has been um, you know, some improvement in the quality of life of young people is often not um, you know, properly understood when people unpack South Africa's um, you know, political prospects. Um, you know, just on Monday, we, have the, we saw the launch of a new political formation, Ahang, by um, Dr. Rampela, uh, Rampele. Um, and what was interesting there is that she was speaking about um, a broken promise that you know the rulers of South Africa has not um, made well on their promise to deliver a better life. Um, we've seen a recent study that young people don't know who Dr. Rampele is. Um, her message or a message like that from a new party, will it resonate with these young people given the fact that they in fact make up the bulk of the voters, the majority of whom are going to be first time voters? Mm -hmm. I think what, what one can say thus far about, about the political platform is that, that Dr. Uh, Rampele has articulated the things that, they, that, that she feels uh, needs to be fixed um, in the country, but we have not really seen policies yet that, that young people can respond to. So I, I think the jury is, is still out, but uh, what, what she did do is, is she made this, this, uh, this plea uh, on behalf of young people, and also offered herself as a as a generational bridge. Now, I, th I think we we still have to wait and see to to what extent her party can capture the imagination of of, of young South Africans, and um, becoming known um, in in the public eye would be one of her challenges. 